very, very clear forward look. Uh, Moldova is determined is, uh, to achieve the goal to become a full and revived mem member of the European Union. You need a good road network. You need a good railway system. You need access to ports, airport, functioning airport, right? It's not going to be easy. It will be difficult, but that can be done. And I think we, as well as other development partners, are absolutely committed to stand by Moldova on this journey. What is the uh, World Bank? Major development partner in Moldova. Why does the World Bank have a partnership with the uh, Republic of Moldova? Because we strongly believe in Moldova's development. Three things that uh, would attract investments in the economy of the Republic of Moldova. Favorable and stable business environment, infrastructure development, skilled workforce. Three economic uh, areas of uh, perspective. Agriculture. Look, no, not many countries have better agriculture products than Moldova has. Three main problems to eliminate for a better business environment. Corruption, bureaucracy, how Moldova can achieve the European living standard within a generation. It has been uh, 22 years of independence of the uh, Republic of Moldova and uh, over 30 years of partnership with the uh, World Bank. Uh, first of all, I uh, would like to ask you to reflect on these three uh, decades and um, offer a vision. Uh, what do you think about Moldova's uh, achievements and uh, failures in uh, these years? And uh, how uh, has the World Bank support helped? Um, let me just start with saying that it, um, these 30 years have not been easy for many countries in the region because um, there was this very significant transitioning happening, including in Moldova, from planned economy to market economy to uh, democracy to established democratic society. That's a very significant change. But Moldova, uh, in addition, had other changes and other difficulties as well. The war on the Dniester River, River. Therefore, those are the things that make this transition more difficult. And I would like to say that Moldova has done a lot and achieved a lot. And we look, I mean, we look at some of the indicators that we in the bank are looking at, for example, reduction of poverty. and. When we look at Moldova from the year 2000 to year 2015, Moldova was among the few countries, among the top three countries in Europe and Central Asia region that managed to get away with extreme poverty. And not many countries have been able to do that. There is also a lot of progress being made towards EU integration. The association agreement in 2014, and visa regime changed for all Moldovans. And last year, I think we all learned about very good news for Moldova, that Moldova was accepted as a EU candidate country. Uh, therefore, these are really good achievements. But it's also clear that there are a lot needs to be done. A lot needs to be done. There are reforms that need to be taken. There are reforms that might not be as fast as we would like to see, but for us, working together with the Republic of Moldova has been an incredible journey. I, I think we have provided very significant amount of financial support. When I look back at 30 years, our financial support was over 1.5 billion US dollars. We have had over 70 operations. That's quite significant. and. Uh, without a doubt, I think this is something that we look forward to continue. And it's not only financial support, it's policy advice, it's knowledge support. And at this point, I think 30 years looking back, I'm very clear that we're looking for a very good collaboration for the years to come. Uh, let's talk about future. What uh, do the partnership plans for the next uh, five uh, years look like? Uh, what will uh, be the focus? We are very glad that uh, we have uh, a five-year strategy 
that was endorsed by the World Bank Board in March this year. And that is what will determine how uh, we cooperate with the Republic of Moldova for the coming five years. It's, and it's, I would also like to say that this is a very clear commitment from our side that we are fully supportive of the reform path that Moldova has taken. This new partnership framework, we call it country partnership framework, it's for, for years 2023 to 2027, is also very closely aligned with the Moldova's national development strategy, European Moldova 2030. And what I would like to say that the circumstances when we prepared this joint partnership framework were a bit different than in other countries or in other situations. And I think we, we all know that the war, the Rus Russia's invasion of Ukraine changed Europe, changed the world, and absolutely has a huge impact on Moldova when the war is right next door. Therefore, the country part of the five-year strategy we first of all looked at it to address and help Moldova to address immediate needs. That's when we saw the refugee influx from that we were, it was very clear that significant financial support will be needed uh, to, the, to the country. And that's why we, what we were doing, we really allocated financial resources in the first year to address those immediate challenges. But at the same time, the five-year strategy is looking at both immediate challenges, but also at the longer-term needs and the reforms that Moldova has to make, has to continue to make sure that the path toward the European Union is smoother, easier, and hopefully faster. Therefore, this five-year strategy is, is really, it programs only first two years, Therefore, we wanted it to be flexible, that when the situation changes, we could adjust the strategy. And that's how it has been structured. But overall, it will look at the higher level outcomes. We would like to support creating more formal jobs. We would like to continue investing in building human capital and strengthening human capital. And we would like to also help creating green and resilient investments. That is the overall outcomes that we would like to see. How can we work together? Uh, next question. The World Bank says the speed of uh, reforms in the recent year could uh, have been uh, faster. Uh, for example, in uh, the area of justice, business environment, or um, restructuring the state-owned uh, enterprises. Uh, do you see effort in Chisinau to improve these three areas? Oh, yes, absolutely. But let me start with saying that there has been a lot of reform efforts that have taken place. Um, but the reforms, the ones you mentioned, reform of justice sector, state-owned enterprises, um, have been slow and sometimes lagging in implementation. I have to say that frequent government changes, uh, what we have, that we have seen, uh, adds to the difficulty because you can't see the, you can see changing priorities, you can see that sometimes there is no continuity and that always slows down the reform. However good is the reform, when you see these things, you find that implementation of the reform is slower and more difficult or even reversed. And we have seen that as well in Moldova. Therefore, I think what we are currently seeing is, is really a determination to go through with these reforms. But, uh, but you're right, and you mentioned a few, but there are many more, you know, that Moldova needs to, to embark on. And I think that's why it's so difficult. When you have to look at the immediate needs and address those, and a lot of effort is being put into addressing those needs, like refugee crisis. Those are immediate needs, energy crisis. And at the same time, you need to think about these longer-term reforms. Sometimes 
you can get the focus or the balance not the right. But I think what Moldova has done, I think they have found this balance. Because when we were working in our country partnership framework, it was very clear message from the government. They would like to continue the longer term development reforms. And I think that's a very good signal for us because then we know that whatever we put forward uh, through our policy dialogue, whatever reform proposals we have, we are convinced that they will be followed through. Maybe not as fast, because I think what we also see, the capacity sometimes is something that slows down reform implementation. And we are struggling that in our portfolio, and the government is struggling with that. But at the same time, what we have seen, I think, and also we have seen, seen through our project, like for example, creating better business environment, right? That's we, we are talking a lot about that. We have a project for support to uh, small, micro and medium sized enterprises. And that has been a long engagement, 10 years. We, just one example, there's a lot of digitization efforts going, uh, going on. And, you know, we, through the first operation, we managed to digitize 87 permits and licenses at the national level. The project that we just recently approved last year will continue this work. But again, it doesn't happen overnight. Therefore, I think these things, and you mentioned just this reform, that will be, it's very important, but that will be a long-term reform. But again, I think we definitely are looking forward to working together on those reforms and supporting in whatever area we have our engagements, we'll look forward supporting those reforms. Uh, the Republic of Moldova received the status of a candidate for EU uh, accession. Uh, you mentioned this uh, aspect. But uh, it is uh, unfortunate uh, geopolitical and uh, economic moment, the war in Ukraine. My question is, how does the World Bank get involved in the supporting the Republic of Moldova in uh, finding to the consequences uh, of the war? And uh, at the same time, uh, preparing uh, for accessions. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, there is this, this dual focus. And uh, we have it also in our partnership framework. Because Moldova is in, in a difficult situation. Because you can't just say, look, we'll just do this one and wait for the other one. No, it has to be balanced and both the immediate needs and the longer term needs, including EU accession, should be addressed at the same time. And I think what we are seeing is that, you know, it has been handled quite well. And I think Moldova impressed the whole world was that after uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a huge amount of refugees, more per capita than any other country, flew into Moldova. And the way Moldova, Moldovans, families, households accepted that it was it was remarkable. But that was also a very costly enterprise ex exercise. Therefore, this is it was not, you know, Moldova was Moldova's income per capita is not a rich country that could easily take on or either help with transportations to other EU countries. That required a lot of financial resources. And I think that's when we stepped in uh, with budget support operation. And there was a series of budget support operation. The one was developed very, very quickly. It was right after Russia's invasion of Ukraine when we provided 100 million budget support to the government to exactly compensate for the amounts that the government has spent from their own budget. Therefore, that was how we deal with the immediate needs. And we continue doing that because there was also energy crisis that all required significant fiscal resources. But going forward, and then we start talking about this longer term agenda and towards EU accession and EU path. And what we also try to build in into our partnership framework is that every either lending operation or analytical work that we are doing, we'll kind of try to look through the lens of the EU accession process. Uh, let me just give you an example. We, 
recently our board approved the agriculture growth uh, project, uh, growth governance and investment project. And it was very clear message from the government that they would like to see how can we, this project help to build institutions that will be needed for the EU already. And that is the payment agency that Moldova had. But what we'll be helping, we'll strengthen this payment agency that provides payments to agriculture, to farmers, because this agency is essential in the EU. When you are exiting to the EU or EU country, there will be more financing coming from the EU. But you need a strong, transparent, reliable payment agency. And that's, that's it's just one example. But the same thing we'll try to do for, through our new energy efficiency project, trying to see how these activities in those projects are aligned with the EU path. Speaking about uh, economy, uh, the economic contraction in uh, 2022 will be followed, uh, according to the World Bank, by modest growth in the current year, possibly only 1.8%. Uh, it will be um, uh, the smallest growth in the region. Uh, what does the World Bank recommend in such a situation? What uh, would be the decisive things that need uh, to be done? Yeah, it is, it, it is small, uh, but it is positive. I, I try to look from that aspect. And when we look at the negative growth that we had in, in, in Moldova had in 2022, I think this is still, it's, it's encouraging that the growth will be positive. Yes, I agree, it is small, but we also have to realize that Moldova uh, was very hard hit by a number of shocks in the few several few years probably more than any other countries it was starting with covid 19 pandemic then droughts then energy crisis and again moldova was very vulnerable because in, it depended on only one energy source and then russia's invasion therefore when you kind of put these risks and compound them you just can, can imagine how hard economy was hit. Therefore, recovering from that, in fact, Moldova started to recover after COVID-19 pandemic, and then these other shocks came in. Therefore, it has been a very, very challenging period. But I think it's, there are, uh, again, a number, a number of things that, that, that could be done. You, I think Moldova needs to, again, needs to realize that there will be a lot of uncertainties and i think that is one thing probably to plan for those uncertainties i think this is something because we don't know how the war next door will continue for how long therefore this is all the fa these are all the factors that need to be planned for i i also think that what what is being done it will be very important is to pre prepare for the next winter season i think we were lucky was the previous one it was warm but we don't know what the next one will be and the government is 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 doing the right thing by really looking at what fiscal space they have to make sure that households and businesses can live through the next heating season and preparing for that i think that that is that is something uh, what is in the immediate term essential at the same time, I think is is very important not to lose this focus on the longer term agenda. Looking at how can businesses will looking at making red tape less present. You know, making sure that businesses can come in, because again, for businesses to come in or for domestic businesses with uncertainties again because of the war is a pretty risky thing. Therefore, how is there a way to reduce those risks now, but also in the medium term? Therefore, those are, I think, are the, some of the things that, uh, you know, I, again, a number of things can be done already. There is a huge infrastructure gap. And what we are seeing now that when the country needs to look at how to reorient its export from east to the west, you need a good road network. 
you need a good railway system. You need access to ports, airport, functioning airport, right? There are all the things that can be looked at now. Yes, they require investments, but there is, I think, a very clear commitment from development community to help Moldova with the investment to address its investment needs. Therefore, I think this is, again, the basis for the future growth needs to start building now. The World Bank always uh, advises uh, the government to increase the efficiency of public uh, spending. Uh, now, after Russia invaded Ukraine and uh, this uh, has given a boost of inflation, money is more expensive. Uh, so uh, what advice can you give to the government uh, to focus on budget, make sure it has uh, enough revenue to collect and uh, sp uh, spend uh, wisely? Or is uh, that not possible when you have to mitigate uh, the fall in uh, purchasing uh, power? I would always say everything is possible. <laughs> I think that would be the very short answer. Again, it might not be easy, but uh, what we have seen through our analysis, through our co country economic memorandum analysis, um, is that there are ways to um, again, to balance uh, these short-term needs, and it's very clear, and the government has put in place very good and strong uh, instruments to support immediate needs, to support household energy vulnerability fund. That will continue. And those are, again, those are costly measures, those are not cheap. But at the same time, I think there are ways to see whether, maybe not immediately, but in the medium term, look for more efficient use of budget resources. Let me just give you um, a few few pro examples. I think the uh, I think this flexibility that the government had uh, will they they need to retain it. It was because again, as I mentioned, uncertainties, and we don't know what the next heating season. Uh, what the next winter will bring. Therefore, I think the government should retain that flexibility to allocate maybe more resources than they planned. But at the same time, it could, it might make sense to look at the spending, some of the expenditures. For example, looking at procurement system, how efficient it is, especially goods and services. Looking at investments, you know, how quickly those investments are actually materializing because the longer you, um, you, you, you wait for the investment to materialize, the more costly it is. Because if you plan your road to be built in, in let's say, a year, but it takes two years, that requires human resources additional, that requires extra uh, financial resources. For that is more costly. Therefore, looking at those things, I think is clearly an option. Um, I also think that, you know, advancing parallel reforms is a possibility. We have looked at um, uh, rationalizing of some of the most expensive uh, service sectors, education, health. Those take a lot of budgetary resources, but there is uh, an opportunity to start looking at how, for example, the network of schools, network of hospitals could be rationalized. Again, this will not bring savings immediately, but again, longer the longer we wait for start looking at these things, the more costly it will be. And, and again, domestic revenue mobilization, it's a long-term issue. I think we, there is a, again, there was a report that looked at the taxation, but at this point, I would just maybe would like to say that there, this is something to, to look and see how the both personal income tax or corporate income tax systems can be adjusted to make sure that it's easier, more transparent, and basically brings in and willingness to pay those taxes, because that's also an issue. But for that, you need a transparent, easy, administrable system and clear for everybody.
both for the government, but also for those who pay those taxes. I understand that there are quite, both on personal income tax side and corporate income tax side, there are a lot of exemptions. There are a lot of different variations. Therefore, I think that's something to look at, whether this could be, and that probably could be done easier than some other longer term reforms. Uh, before we end, I uh, would like to know how uh, you describe the state of uh, the Moldovan economy and uh, what uh, gives uh, your hope, maybe? Therefore, I think that, that, as I mentioned, this very, very clear forward look. Uh, Moldova is determined is, uh, to achieve the goal to become a full and revived mem member of the European Union. And I think that is helpful, but it also gives uh, gives a, a lot of clarity and 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 for us to make sure that that we know that we are needed and we can work with, with the country and also our country economic memorandum I think which uh, is called uh, um, how Moldova can achieve the European living standard within a generation and the country economic memorandum concludes that yes it is possible it's not going to be easy it will be difficult, but that can be done. And I think we, as well as other development partners, are absolutely committed to stand by Moldova on this journey. It looked like a uh, uh, like, uh, message uh, for Moldova and for Independence Day, uh, or maybe you have uh, uh, another message. Yes, uh, the 27th of August, Moldova's Independence Day. I, I would only repeat the message. I think that it is, it is very good to see that there is a clear determination for Moldova to get and finalize the path to the, be a full-fledged, reliable member of the European Union. And we, I would like to wish Good luck, and again, as I said, we stand ready to support Moldova in this journey. At the end, uh, uh, Mrs. Inguna, I have a list of uh, short questions uh, for you. What is the uh, World Bank? The World Bank is an international development organization. It has 189 members. It's like a cooperative. We have a board of 25 board. 24 board directors, and uh, the World Bank provides assistance to, in terms of financial products, policy advice, knowledge products, to the countries that are developing. And we are a major development partner in Moldova. Why does the World Bank have a partnership with the uh, Republic of Moldova? Because we strongly believe in Moldova's development. and. We feel that Moldova trusts us as a development partner. Does the World Bank uh, spe specifically offer grants or loans? Uh, the World Bank of, to Moldova, the World Bank offer lo of, offers loans. And it's a different type of loans. It could be for investment. It could be for budget support. And it is that I think it, we can also be very flexible in mobilizing a different type of lending when the country is in need. Uh, when the, and uh, what condition are World Bank uh, loans offered? The, the, the loans that we are offering uh, have a flexible, it's, a, it, it's called flexible loan. That means that it's a long-term lending. It's 35 years maturity. The lending terms de depend on what currency country wants to borrow, but those are flexible and they are offered on the uh, con still concessional terms because the World Bank has AAA rating and can borrow in financial markets on very good terms. That allows us to extend on the good preferential terms borrowing to lending to countries. It is also, you know, it's a country's choice, I have to say, because depending on country's debt management, the country chooses how long the loan should be, what terms it should be, and what currency to borrow. Uh, three things that uh, would attract investments in the economy of the Republic of Moldova. Favorable and stable business environment. Um, infrastructure development and skilled workforce. 
three obstacles to clear their way? It's probably, you know, again, those will be, the, will, will be the three. I think continuing reforms to making sure that the business environment is more favorable and both for domestic and for foreign investment. I think cutting red tape, reducing the number of licenses that are needed. Infrastructure, continue building roads, you know, I, making sure that energy infrastructure is stable and reliable because that's what businesses are looking for, right? But that's also very important for Moldova to increase its export to the Western countries. And human capital development, I think, is investing in people will be very important. We all know about out-migration and investing in human capital will be essential. Try to keep Moldovans in Moldova, but also maybe at some point bring people back. Free economic uh, area is so for a perspective. Agriculture? Look, Oh, not many countries have better agriculture products that Moldova has. You know, looking at the fruits and, and, and vegetables and many others. And I think the evidence of that is that recently, you know, Moldova was able to access EU markets with its poultry and dairy products. Therefore, I think agriculture will remain something that needs to be invested and needs to be developed. Um, information technology and services, uh, we see very nice uh, uh, efforts to strengthen this industry and it's a fastest growing industry therefore that i think is a, has a huge potential to provide the required growth to moldovan economy and tourism and hospitality when you travel around moldova you know there is a wine industry is developing but i think this requires more investment to make sure that it, it is combined with nature tourism, eco-tourism, activities for children and families, therefore, but that is definitely an area to continue. Three main problems to eliminate for a better business environment. Corruption, bureaucracy, I think we talked about red tape. I think those are very closely linked both. Um, I think that is, is important and, and, and just a system to make sure that businesses can rely on it. And I think it's also limited access to finance. Um, we are talking, you know, uh, as a, with the National Bank, I think, but the financial sector is stable, is, is, but access to finance, especially for small and medium-sized businesses, is not that easy agriculture, access finance to finance. Therefore, those are the things that need to be looked carefully and that I think would, would really help Moldovan economy to develop. Uh, this uh, podcast is called uh, Making Money Make uh, Sense. Uh, if I ask you what it means uh, to, to you to give uh, meaning to money, uh, what would you say? Investment, but productive investment. The investment should be productive. Then the money is wisely used. Thank you. Thank you.